All right, guys, today we're getting into orthodontics, nuclear reactors, Harvard, Zometry, NASA, and a very cool new dual extrusion system that I think you'll find very interesting. Right here today on Vision Minor 3D Printing News. Let's get into it. Starting out, we've got a company called Lightforce Orthodontics, who just raised $14 million in funding for custom 3D printed braces. So they recently got this Series B funding round, which is going to help them continue to develop. And they're using 3D printing to provide patients with a personalized treatment process, since no one's jaw, mouth, or teeth are the same, right? The company was founded by Dr. Alfred Griffin III, DMD, PhD, MMSC, and Dr. Lou Schumann, formerly of Invisalign. So we got some big boys from the big companies coming in here and doing some really cool stuff. Lightforce's technology basically creates custom braces by 3D printing brackets which are designed for each individual tooth, ideally leading to a shorter time wearing the braces and fewer appointments to get them adjusted. The brackets are printed out of a ceramic material similar to what's currently used for injection molded braces. Dr. Alfred Griffin, Lightforce's CEO, says that braces haven't changed in 50 years, yet are by far the most common treatment tool. This opportunity to help patients and orthodontists was why we applied modern 3D software and mass customization to what we know today as braces. Companies like Invisalign and Smile Direct Club have been using 3D printing for years to enable mass customization for their customers. Now, as materials improve, we do expect to see a lot more products being made directly in 3D printing, much like the Lightforce offering. That is pretty cool stuff. Make sure you smile big, and while you're at it, hit that like button and maybe the subscription bell. Uh, it helps our channel grow, and we love you for it. Moving right along, Purdue University has received a grant to 3D print a new nuclear reactor. That's pretty cool. So basically, the US Department of Energy has awarded an $800,000 grant to Purdue University's College of Engineering to accelerate the development of their micro reactor. This project will be the first advanced micro reactor in the US to operate in over 40 years. This is really a big deal. Purdue scientists and engineers are looking to drive the integration of technologies such as additive manufacturing, computational material modeling, and AI in creating the components for the reactor. Hani Abdel Khalik explained, Purdue will fill a technological gap in the nuclear industry, reflecting a broader trend of applying AI strategies to support additive manufacturing. AM enables designs to be adjusted during manufacturing, greatly decreasing production cost and time. Our work is aimed at driving widespread adoption of additively manufactured reactor components by using an AI-powered software system to ensure safety and reliability. I'm not sure AI and safety and reliability really go in the same sentence, Skynet, anyone? Anyway, crazy, very good times. I'm gonna stop watching those Chernobyl videos at night. And moving right along into Harvard researchers have developed yet another shape memory 3D printing material. Now, this one is pre-programmed with reversible shape memory capabilities and it's eco-friendly, made from two chains of keratin uh, arranged into a spring-like structures that have been twisted together. Once combined into a coiled coil, the material is capable of being changed into any shape before returning to its original formation in a shape memory effect. The biocompatible material was created using recycled wool and besides potential ecological benefits and recyclability, benefits could be seen in the medical prosthesis and textile sectors. Now, it's not the first shape memory material created. While scientists over at ETH Zurich have made a 3D printed shape memory material for biomedical, aerospace, and engineering devices, Lawrence, Liv Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, love you guys, uh, created silicone structures which recover from compression and the Georgia Institute of Technology has used additive manufacturing to create tensegrity objects which can change shape based on the level of tensity applied to them. So, not a new thing, but very cool stuff. Amazing stuff, actually. So, moving right along, Cultivate 3D's new 3D printer titled the elevator complete with a medusa dual extrusion head now that's why we're really here but let me get into this real quick 
The Australian-based company has launched its new elevator 3D printer, large format FFF FDM squeezing hot plastic through a nozzle type printer, and it's designed to compete with large format systems like 3D Platform and Big Rep. So they're going after the big boys, the large format, normal temperature, big printers. Okay. Very cool. Let's get into it. Let's look at the specs because the price I think will surprise you. Uh, we're looking at a 1000 by 660 by 500 millimeter build volume. That's huge. That's a full meter on the X. That is cool. That's something you don't see much. Uh, we've got one that's a full meter cubed and that's about, well, let's just say it's in, it's, it's six figures. Um, that's the ma'am over from Cincinnati, but I don't see much like this coming out. So eh, just real quick, it's got dual extruders, but not just dual extruders. It's got two slice engineering mosquito magnums, excellent hot ends, very, very well made and made in USA. Dan, shout out you the man. Uh, it's got the classic Bontech BMG extruders. So you're not going to run out of torque on those puppies. Lock line coolers. And those, those are the things that you see on CNC machines. They're like, you know, blowing air or blowing chips out of the way. So, I mean, this is just smart. This should have been done a long time ago on other 3D printers. It makes so much sense. You guys are just for that, just for that. This printer's awesome. Um, realistically, uh, it's got a standard Cartesian Mosin system, but it's a little bit different because the Z-axis actually doesn't use a screw. It actually uses belts on all the axes because screws and threaded rods aren't always true. And so you can get a little bit of play in the bed. 99% uh, of printers right now use them and they work fine, but this is kind of cool. You get just that little extra. But the real reason we're all here right now is their Medusa multi-material system with the two slice hot ends. <clears throat> this is really cool mainly because it solves two huge problems that we see in dual extrusion systems. First, when you're dual extrusion printing, one hot end has to print and then it has to go over and cool down. And then before it prints again, it's got to heat all the way back up and it's got to go. And then it's a good chance it's going to ooze all over everything and make your part really messy. But it also slows down the print job significantly because you have to wait for it to cool, wait for it to heat, all that jazz. Even if your machine is IDEX or independent dual extruders, meaning you got two nozzles that are separate, you still have to purge those nozzles. And a lot of the time it still has a, uh, you know, a purge tower. So, or prime tower, as they say. On the Medusa, the hot ends actually rotate out of the way. There's actually a nozzle blocker that keeps it from oozing at all. This is genius. This is so smart that I'm ashamed of everyone else for not coming up with this. Actually, I still love you all, but Cultivate, you guys have a special place in my heart for developing this system. I want one send me one, give us one. We will play with it and make videos on it and love you forever. This is great, this is super cool. Plus it's got the slice on there so you could potentially do high temp materials. Now, I don't know if this will ever be a high temp machine considering it's aluminum extrusion and how much aluminum likes to shift and bend when it's heated up to higher temperatures. So who knows if we'll get that high temp chamber in there, maybe a future version will be made of steel and we will. We'll see. Anyway, really cool stuff coming out of Australia. Uh, the rest of the specs are very solid. You've got the 32-bit main board, the total lack of TMC drivers because of the torque issues, and of course a bed leveling micro switch that will map the entire bed. Uh, what's the caveat? Is it the price? No, no, it's actually not the price. <laughs> the caveat is it doesn't come with a build plate. Uh, they basically found that shipping it with a giant build plate that size, a meter, by 660 by, you know, yeah, a meter by 660 uh, is super expensive. So the caveat is they give you the dimensions and everything and you've got to go to Home Depot and source your own glass or source your own carbon fiber or something like that and make your own build plate. Now, how much does this cost? A startlingly low $3,520 for the enclosed version right now on Kickstarter, which started on September 8th. Uh, if you want the naked edition with no enclosure, then it's only $27.60. That's pretty cheap for what you're getting. I mean, the slice hot ends and the motion system, everything alone, this seemed like a pretty good kit. Uh, it's an amazing price. I mean, you're getting a full meter. This is awesome. Now, you probably need some really good adhesive to keep that print, that long print, down on all the sides. So be sure to check out our nanopolymer adhesive bed prep. In my opinion, it's the best 
bed glue on the market because it works on everything. It works from PLA all the way up to peak. We made it for peak, it works for everything. Crazy stuff, really good, and a little goes a long way. So, moving right along, uh, go check out the Kickstarter, link in description. And next, we've got Zometry raising $75 million in another equity funding round. Zometry is a specialized on-demand manufacturing service, uh, and they've been doing a lot of 3D printing and CNC for many years, and they just added X1 binder jetting to their offerings. Um, but the new equity round <laughs> was led by a lot of different accounts. We had T. Rowe Price & Associates, who uh, I believe led everything, and then we've got Everybody, we've got BMW, Greenspring, Dell, Bosch, Foundry, Highland, Almaz, like a whole bunch of places are putting into this thing. Now, to quote, the adoption of distributed manufacturing across industries is accelerating, said Andrew Davis, the director of private investments at T. Rowe Price Associates, Inc. Zometry's agile digital marketplace helps both the Fortune 500 and smaller businesses meet their production requirement. Digital manufacturing technologies reduce the reliance on traditional supply chains, which have been severely disrupted during this pandemic. Even starting in December, we were having issues getting parts from different countries, and we started really seeing this up through January, February, before the lockdowns ever even happened in March. So supply chain has been a really big topic for the last uh, six months to a year. Randy Altschuler, CEO of Zometry, says that Zometry is focused on helping manufacturers navigate the current disruption associated with supply chain flexibility, reshoring, and shift to digital manufacturing. That is an astronomical amount of money for an astronomical achievement. They've done a lot of really great things. 75 million is not chump change. Moving right along, we've got NASA. We're talking about NASA and color to 3D print batteries in space. Okay, 3D printing in space. This episode just got a little bit more fun. The Marshall Space Flight Center has awarded Color Technologies a contract to build 3D printed battery systems for unmanned and robotic space applications. Color Technologies develops next generation carbon fiber thermal management technologies for batteries and electronic systems, mostly used in aerospace, electronics, and electric vehicle production. Think Tesla. Now in June 2020, they developed a passive propagation resistant battery design for space. According to NASA Deputy Chief Technologist John Carr, NASA employs highly rigorous assurance and safety standards, especially for our man-rated technologies. Color's PPR design solution for future manned and unmanned space missions is an ideal fit for mass design, flexibility, and cost, all the while maintaining high safety standards against risks like thermal runaway. You don't want to have the temperature running away and then exploding, so safety first, guys. So 3D printing batteries in space provides a very important advantage, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, it will significantly lower the cost of battery pack transportation, specifically for the new Artemis missions, which are the, the next moon mission. And it's mainly because, well, they won't have to transport them that far or in gravity. The ability to 3D print batteries in space would allow for more extended missions and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, Dr. Timothy Knowles, co-founder and CTO of Color, commented, the optionality to repair and replace battery packs in space with 3D printed parts printed in space is a complete game changer. I'll say so. Uh, overall, the ability to 3D print batteries in space has a lot of advantages, such as lowering costs, allowing for extended missions, and reserving cargo capacity for more valuable items and equipment. So here at Fisher Miner, we specialize in high temperature performance thermoplastics like Peak and Ultim, which actually do go into space. We've had a lot of these projects going on, so check out our website. We've got machines and materials and everything else in between. If you like this video, leave a comment down below, and I'm gonna pick the funniest one, and I'm gonna pin it next week, same day, and if you're that guy, I'm gonna send you a free bottle of nanopolymer adhesive. So, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. Click one of these videos, and I'll see you on the next one.